Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures. As you can see in front of us, we have a few models that we painted over time from Cobra Mode Miniatures. And I gotta say, I am a sucker for fun, interesting, and varied looking models, as you can see. Here we have three different painted examples of some of the models they've released. We have the Salamander Hikiga, we have the Platypus-like Bundabura, keep them in focus and then we have the big froggy like hikiga so there are a few other races that cobra mode has put out and slowly but surely over time my backlog has continued to increase in models from cobra mode that i have been meaning to show off so i thought you know what today's the day let's get these guys on film because i really want to get to painting the rest of them and enough's enough so we have a whole slew of different models to show off, and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity. One of the most interesting for me was the fact that they finally went and got a whole set of Ashigaru Spearmen, which are just the typical locals ready to defend their villages. And then the funny thing is that quite a few of these that I printed out were misprints and fails i lost a lot of limbs trying to get these guys painted and painted printed and i thought to myself you know what we need to save these models why should just the able-bodied ones get put to work so then i went ahead and started building peg legs for them and i was quite pleased with myself he's not going to let the loss of a limb slow him down any i thought about putting them all on squared bases just to see if they ranked up they didn't do the best of job but that might also be me trying to mirror them as well some of these are mirrors of each other like for example these are actually the same model just been flipped around and i cut off the top of his hat just to make it a little bit different to have him look more unique so there was a set of these they're all oh we forgot the hoppy guy leaping over his buddies to get a better view of the battlefield as his friend just cheers them on back there with his fan dance and the Bundabura nods along approvingly so those guys are all available as of right now some of the more recent Hanzaki besides all of the Ashigaru Spearmen we also had well, if you wanted to make a Ninja Turtle team, we had, I think this was Hanamaru, that's what it was. All of their names always start with a Ha, which is kind of a fun thing, because Hanzaki, anyway. So that was Hanamaru with the bow, and then we had Haneda with the nunchucks. And I thought, I finally am getting a little bit better with both printing and cleaning these models. And I'll tell you this. Cobra Mode stuff is very delicate at times to get off of the print bed. Some of the models are quite fragile. Excuse me, holding it up didn't really show off the quality, but let me get some other stuff up here. So besides those, to go with the Bundabura, when he was originally released, he had a couple of bodyguard models that came with him. And I went ahead and got one of his big platypi brethren ready to go here. He's been primed already. As you can see, this is about the time I ran out of primer. I like to prime a ton of stuff all at the same time. He's a big model. Just in case you were curious. Obviously, you can scale them to whatever size you wish. Whee! Not something you want to tangle with, I would imagine. And then there was also a recent, somewhat recent, Bundabura alchemist, chemist type model. Let me see if I can... Okay, when I turn the flash off, you can... There we go. So I know it's a little shiny at the moment. You can see it's got the little apron on, the potion, the little bifocals sitting I don't know if it's a male or a female <laughs> bifocals sitting on the bill there and this model actually was released with a giant wombat carrying its wares I could have sworn they made a set of poop to go with it and I can't find the file now I might have to go double check and re-download that 
Who doesn't want a giant wombat carrying all of their gear? And there was also a little cart that slots right on in. And then for the Alcoholica platypi, there's also a nice big distillery that you can carry along with him. Like I said, fun and unique models. If cutesy anthropomorphic marsupial Australian animals aren't your thing, um, lately they've been continuing to put out a bunch of moth-based people. This was called Atropos, I believe, and you can see he's got, they're supposed to be like the assassin types of the bug realm, I guess. There's a whole background lore you guys are more than welcome to check out. You can see he's got the severed head of one there. Now you can see those horrible print lines. That's 100% me. I printed this guy up a while ago. That would explain why. I'd like to give another try to this one. He's a cool looking model. Reminds me of Vampire Hunter D with the big floppy hat and the cool sword and the drastic pose. Dramatic pose, not drastic. Speaking of big swords, we've got some of the Dai Tengu, which are obviously only looking tank guys with big horns and incredibly thin and delicate noses. So this is Jakubo. And then I dig this guy. This was a recent release. This is, oh, what was his name? Buzembo. I'm going to have a bow in the name. His hand was a separate piece. So be careful printing this stuff because some of the parts are quite delicate. It looks cool, though. The wavy-tongued swords. They're about human size. For something named Dai Tengu, I, I was imagining them to be much larger, much more ogre-sized. I guess they are somewhat bigger than a typical human. Bigger than the Bundabura. I just like that name. Oh, I forgot this little dude. He came with the Bundabura. Their little pet. It's like a marshmallow fluffy corgi thingy. I think his tail failed, but that's okay. It's like I know we had an actual corgi over here. They can share the food together. <laughs> I don't know where he came from. Maybe he was from Titan Forge. I think he was Titan Forge. But one of the coolest models that they've put out recently, and when I saw this, I was like, oh crap, we gotta print that, was this giant caterpillar. Who doesn't want to have a massive giant, there's his face in there, giant caterpillar to harass and harangue your party of intrepid adventurers. Maybe it's just going after the alcohol. Unfortunately, I can't find where I put the pack snail. To go along with the pack wombat, there was a snail carrying goods as well, but I don't know what I did with him. I printed him, and I can't find him now. It's quite frustrating. Maybe we're all going to team up for a heroic crossover to fight off the giant caterpillar. Which leads me to wonder if this is the caterpillar larval form, where is the adult one? Maybe we'll see that in the future. One of the cool things about Cobra Mode stuff, also I've mentioned before, in case you have the typical audience of players that are like, oh, I don't want to use it. I don't know what we're going to use it for. There are 5th edition D&D &D rules available for every model that they've produced at this point. So if you need to find a good use, it already exists. So something to keep in mind if you're looking for something different to print. I know I'm looking forward to finishing up Zhu Zhen with his gigantic, humongous base. It's going to take me a while. I have started on it. If you guys have any suggestions on how to paint it, by all means, please consider helping suggest something. I've barely started the base itself, and I have to do his big, giant, crazy minion spirit things, as well as the evil yeti three-eyed sorcerer as well. But as you can see, just... Looking quickly at the tabletop stuff here, there is a wide variety, and I haven't even printed up any of his goat people or the raccoons or any of the other funky stuff that they've done over the you know last year or so. So if you're interested in something different, and I mean visually unique, 
but a little bit of a challenge to get out those print beds. I would absolutely recommend you do take a look at Cobra Mode stuff. I'm sure we'll be seeing more from them on this channel in the future as well because we do so thoroughly enjoy it. We'll put the links down below both to the Patreon and the My Mini Factory page where you can check out some of the older releases and hopefully something that tickles your fancy. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.